Lord, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Thanks to his Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. How many people are ah, free today? Glory. Hallelujah. Thank no you, more Jesus. shackles, no more chains. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Come on, somebody bless his name. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody put your hands together. Yes. a little louder than before I want to sing a little louder than before oh.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. From the inside. From the inside.
Lord. You deserve it. Come on. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, somebody sing it like you mean it. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. All over refuge, if you know the word, say my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Somebody glory, lift your glory. Voice, say my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Cause you deserve it. You, you deserve it. 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 All of the glory, all of the glory belongs to you. Come on, don't lose it. Somebody say, all of the glory. All of the glory belongs to you. Yes, Lift your voice Lord. And say, yes, all Lord. Of the glory. All of the glory belongs to you. Say, all of the glory. All of the glory belongs to you. You deserve it.
yes, yes, yes. Church, say amen. Ah, thank you, if you can, I want you to stand on your feet. There is a fresh anointing yes, in this place. Yes, Ooh, Sometimes glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, we Jesus. come looking for something yes, different. Yes, yes. But the presence of the Lord thank is you, here. Hallelujah. 
Can't you feel his presence? He's already here. Yes. The lyrics have been ministering to us. Dealing with freedom. 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 Thank you. Not freedom from afflictions. Not freedom from financial shortcomings. Yes, yes, yes. Not freedom from persecution and trials. Yes, Lord. But freedom from the bondage. Yes. That Satan and sin will hold people back. How many today can say, I've been set free? I've been set free. For where the presence of the Lord is, yes. there is freedom. Then the lyrics kept ministering to us. Let praises rise. How many of us have sit down on God when he's trying to lift us up so we can praise him? Never let your problems keep you down. Let praises rise, not from the organ or the keyboard, not from the music, but let it rise from the inside. Something on the inside ought to make you want to praise God and say, Lord, set me on fire. I'm sick and I'm tired of being sick and tired. I'm tired of not giving your name the glory, not giving you the praise. I want you to set me on fire till all the world can see is your glory. Is your glory inside of me. I'm telling you, I've I'm just full. I'm tired of playing church. I'm tired of just going to buildings. I'm tired of waiting on somebody else. Lord, use me. If nobody will lift you up, use me. I'm not waiting for the seniors, the adults, the babies, the millenniums, the X's, the Y's, and the Z's. Nobody else use me. Hallelujah. Church is praying time. I say it's praying time. Yes, it is. I get more than two announcements every week of somebody going home to their eternal resting place. It is always my prayer, Lord, I, I pray that they left here yes, Lord Jesus. with your spirit on the inside. There is a heavy cloud over our nation. And it doesn't stop at the top. It's moving to our states. It's moving to our counties, our districts. And it's moving into our homes and into our lives. For the word of the Lord tells me that in the last days, days. there will be a great falling away. I pray, Lord, don't let it be named once among us. I 
I just left Washington, D.C. one week ago and got a phone call. One of the new members that just joined the church, living in the community, in her neighborhood, there was a killing. And instead of people hiding, she gathered together the saints of God and said, let's walk this neighborhood and pray. Church, that's how we can make a difference. Oh, thank you, Lord. We got to go out into the world. Let them know that God is still in control. Let the light shine from inside of me. We had four apostles in our international organization. One and his companion just came down with COVID again. He got so faint, he woke up, passed out, hit his head, unconscious, rushed to the emergency room. our newly elected apostle in July. We attended his funeral service in November. We have others that have companions that are bedridden and they are caretakers. I'm telling you, the devil is moving. Churches need to pray more. Yes, Lord Jesus. And seek God's will. My heart is heavy. I want you to just where you are, standing, sitting. I need you to just lift up your eyes and to the hills from yeah. With cometh our strength. Church, there's something happening. We moved into 2023 with a vision, a theme from God. Yes, yes. To a reimagining church growth and community engagement. First Lady and I and a triad churches from Houston, Texas, Atlanta, Georgia, Washington, D.C. We just came off of 10 days of consecration. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And the presence of the Lord moved yes, through Lord. virtual services. Yes, yes, yes. Every scripture was inspiring. Every prayer was moving the throne of grace. Yes. Every sermon or inspiration shook the foundation of heaven. Yes, yes, yes. And we did it without just letting preachers preach. Mm -hmm. The women of Zion taught beautiful lessons. Mm -hmm. Amen. From Texas to Atlanta through Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. men and women prayed. Inspired, Hallelujah. spoke and teach, and I I prayed and asked God, please don't let this momentum die. Mm -hmm. Make it a movement. Yes, yes. And God ordained from the depth of that person in the community. Let me know we can go out, and we shall make a difference. Ashview Heights should never be the same as long as God's people are in this area. Hallelujah. Would you pray with me? In the name of Lord God Almighty, that name that's above every name, 
that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess that you are Lord and you are God. We are tired of being emotionally driven. We want to be driven by the Spirit of God. And where there is unity, there is strength. Bind us together, Lord. Build us up where we are torn down. Strengthen us where we are weak. Let this house be a house of worship. A place where the lost and the lonely can come and find refuge for their souls. Help us, Lord, to always come and be refreshed and refilled. But when we leave, let us take Jesus with us. Bring a friend when we return. We love you. We glorify your name. Let the people of God say amen. Amen and amen. You may be seated. I just feel like God is doing a new thing. God is doing something that we can't imagine. I get to travel a lot. I get to see different people of God. But the one thing that encourages me is God is not dead. As the movie said, he's yet alive. But the question is, is he alive inside of us? Today, I just want to expound a couple of scriptures to you. And the most important thing that I can think of today is that we remember the Lord's death, his burial, his resurrection. Christmas is one day. Easter is one day, but every day we ought to say he lives and he lives within me. If you have your Bible, your iPad, your iPhone, whatever with you, if you would turn with me to the 30th division of the books of Psalms. While you're getting the scripture, I want to welcome Ms. Fields into our presence. And I pray that you will find a fellowship of love where God's love is demonstrated through God's people loving one another. Don't you leave, let her leave here without you embracing her with love. And let her know that she has come to a place where the lost and the lonely, the downtrodden, the uplifted, the rich, the poor, no matter what your status is, we are all equal in the eyesights of God. The psalmist writes in the 30th division of these 150 books, and I'm just going to read a few of the verses from verse number one. The word of the Lord says, I will exalt thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hath not made my foes to rejoice over me. Now that's a powerful scripture. Lord, because you have picked me up and lifted me higher than my burden, you have, Lord, not let my enemies have fun with me. Down in verse number five, he says, for his anger endureth but a moment. That tells me we can make God mad when we don't praise him and lift him up. He's going to pick us up. When we are down, but will we lift him up? 
For his anger is only brief. When we acknowledge, confess, repent, and turn, God anger. His being upset with our omissions and our commissions, he will cast it into the sea of forgetfulness. I love verse 5 says, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night. In other words, we're going to cry. We're going to have trials. We're going to suffer. But the word of God says it will endure, not just darkness of night, but for a little while. The good news is, but joy. The joy of the Lord gives us strength. His joy cometh in the morning. That means when he wipes away the darkness in our life. <laughs> we are going to have joy. Verse number 10 says, hear, O Lord. Somebody said, Lord, listen to me. And I have, and have mercy on me. My mourning have turned into dancing. <laughs> Not just dancing because the music is good. I guarantee you if I turn Brother Mike a loose and let him hit some of that dancing music. But we ought to be able to dance when there's no praise team, no organ, no music. Even the church doors are locked. But dancing is not just soul train. Dancing is in the heart. Oh, I can lift up my hands into the hills from whence cometh my strength. And I say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for keeping my family. Thank you for my friends and my loved ones. That's, I'm going to dance in my heart. I'm going to open my mouth and I'm going to praise you. I just want to talk for a few minutes today from a subject. Be patient. Help is on the way. <laughs> Be patient. We are living in a microwave age, a time when we want what we want when we want it. We don't want to wait for it. I remember a time when people became employed. They stayed with the company's duration of their work life. Now they are jump jobs in a minute. I'm not happy. I don't like this person, and I, I, I don't like what I'm doing. Be patient. I've seen people that had bad attitudes about where they are employed, but once they learn to be patient and talk to God, he can move either in you or he can move in them. I had to figure out what patience really meant. You can be waiting but you can be grumbling and complaining. That's not patience. If you ask Mr. Webster what is patience, he will tell you patience is the ability to accept or tolerate delays, to accept or tolerate problems, to accept or tolerate sufferings without becoming annoyed or anxious. How many of us really have patient spirits? Quick-tempered. Always got to open our mouth and let people know what has displeased me. Turn it over to Jesus. He'll work it out. I'm not going to even go through all of the things that I recorded, but I'm told in the Gospel of Luke there was a certain man that was attacked. And when the choir members came down from the temple, they just ignored him and passed to the other side. When the priest came down, he looked at him but had no compassion. Oh, but there was a 
certain man that stopped by. He's not even identified in the Bible as being a Christian. But he had mercy and he took the man and laid him on his beast. Took him to the doctor and said, doctor, I want you to fix him up. And if we owe you anything, when I come back, I'm going to repay you for all. Now, we read that scripture, but we don't ever extrapolate it into our lives. In other words, we need to help other people that need help and be patient until God comes back and he will reward us. Mm -hmm. God has people bringing sick souls into the house of worship. And we are looking what's in it for me. But God says, you just take care of them. And be patient. When I come, I will reward you. We need to learn to be patient because help is on the way. I'm almost finished for today. Hebrews chapter 10 Verse number 36. Y'all write these down. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36 through 39. I'm not going to read them all. But the Bible says, you have need for patience. That after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. There's a certain preacher out of Houston, Texas. Every sermon says, Every promise in the book is mine. How many of us studied the word of God to know that if he said it, you don't have to believe it, but it shall come to pass. All we have to do is be patient for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come. And he will not tarry, or that word means to wait. Now, the just, do I have any people in here that are just? That means we are clearly cleaned up for God. They shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, if you don't do the will of God, if you're not impatient enough and wait for God to fulfill his promise in your life, the Bible says that your soul shall not have pleasure in him. But we that are not of them, the world, those that draw back under perdition, but we are those that bleed to the saving of the soul. We have need for patience. Ecclesiastes 7 and 8 says, at the end of the matter is better than the beginning. Don't just look at what's happening now. Look at what God has promised. And patience is better. I know this sometimes don't work in the apostolic Pentecostal hand clapping. Methodist, Baptist, Unitarian, whatever the Reformation is. But the scripture says patience is better than pride. Some people are so pride and got so, so proud and so proud, they are so lifted up that you can't tell them anything. They know everything. There are some saints of God that are like a teenager. They know everything and have not experienced anything. Trials come to make us strong. Burdens come to let us know that God can relieve it. Sickness will afflict you, but God says with his stripes, we are healed. But we got to be patient. Do what the doctors say. I'm going to say that again because some folks I had, one member once said, I'm not taking any medicine. I just don't believe in it. I said, well, you go ahead. But God gave those doctors and physicians some knowledge for some reason. It's like the blind man that would say, I don't want that spittle on my eyes. God says, okay, just stay blind. If they prescribe it and you pay for it, you might as well take it. But that choice is up to you. 
I'm almost finished. James chapter 5, verse number 11 says, we count them happy which endure. When you find people that's not happy, they're not enduring what they're going through. We count them happy which endure. Why? Because you have heard of the patience of Job. And one songwriter said, Job waited on the Lord. Why can't I? <laughs> Job waited and has seen the end of the Lord. Job was patient. He sat down in sackcloth and ashes when his friends had turned their back on him, when his spouse had told him to curse God and die. Job said, oh, my appointed time, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to wait until the Lord come, until I'm changed. Then the Lord is very pitiful, but he's tender in mercy. Let us learn to be patient because help is on the way. We should be patient in our suffering. We should look for the promises of God. And we should seek his glory through our patience. And I'm going to finish with David's writing in Psalms, book 40, verse 1, in the New International Version. And David, the psalmist said, I waited patiently on the Lord. Ah, I wish somebody today can say, I'm waiting patiently on the Lord. Pastor, not just preaching like normal. He's not just sweating and jumping. I found out when I finish sweating and jumping and wearing out my shirts and clothes, people keep acting like they act. <laughs> keep going where they go. So God is saying, put my word in them. Teach them to reimagine church growth. When I say church growth, I'm not talking about congregational size. Church growth starts with each person in the body of Christ growing. How do we grow? We grow through studying the word of God. We grow through fasting and praying. We grow through sharpening ourselves against those that are sharp with the word of God. We must grow inside before we can grow outside. How can we witness to others when we have baggage that we can't get rid of we must reimagine our relationship with God reimagine our spiritual relationship with one another we must reimagine what's working and good in my life and what do I need to abandon and what do I need to build on we need to imagine Getting involved in the community. These hollow halls and sacred pews and, and beautiful songs of worship, they are great and wonderful for us. But what about those that know not Jesus? The only Bible they see is us every day. The only God they ever hear talking is us. When they hear us cussing and fussing, they are saying, I got that spirit already. We must wait patiently on the Lord. And the Bible says in due season we shall reap. We need God more today than ever before. People are leaving God. Why? Because they're leaving traditions. We have made traditions stronger than the gospel. That's what Jesus Christ said. Your traditions are stronger than the word. Traditions are great. We need traditions sometime to keep us structured. But don't send me to hell because I'm breaking your tradition. We can demonize people who don't do what I want them to do. Preach, preacher. 
Be patient. Saints, if I don't leave another word with you, I want to encourage everybody to be patient. It's getting better. I say it's getting better. It's getting better all the time. Open up your eyes and quit looking in the rearview mirror. Yesterday's gone. We must change with the culture, but don't let the culture change us. That we neglect what God has saved and ordained us to do. I don't want your last words to be, Lord, I'm sorry. I don't want to stand over you horizontally in the church and try to preach you into heaven. Because that does not work. We better be patient now and wait and see what God has in store for us. Bow your heads with me. I'm, I've done what God has given me. We're going to observe his ordinance of communion. But if there is a soul in this house, I don't need the praise team to sing. I need you to make up your mind. This is your day to make the most important decision in your life where you will spend eternity. If there's one that has never given their life to Christ. Paul said to the church at Rome, present your body a living sacrifice. Make it holy and it will be acceptable unto the Lord. If you have not been baptized or buried in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, your day of patience can end today. You don't have to wait until baptismal month. Is there one that will say, I'm ready. I've heard the voice of God. Speak to me. Perhaps there's one that has already been baptized in his name, filled with his spirit, has spoken in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And you're looking for a church home to have the people of God rejoice with you and weep with you. We open the doors of this temple for you to come and be a part of our extended spiritual family. I'm finding out it don't take long for altar call. People are either ready. If you have to beg them up, you got to beg them to stay. And God doesn't want beggars, those that have to be begged. I never found in the scripture where he begged people to do anything. He just spoke the will of God. I'm going to ask Elder if he will come as we prepare to observe the Lord's command for his people. The missionaries will remove the cover. If possible, would you stand out of reverence to the body and the resurrection of Jesus Christ? For 
we have prepared before you as commanded by God. To the church at Corinth, Paul wrote, if you are hungry, that's in your flesh, eat at home. But when we come together, what we do is in remembrance of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul said, he or she that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation unto themselves. And let me just unpackage that for you. He's not talking about what you've done. He's not talking about who you are. But he says, if you partake of this unworthily because you do not discern it as the body of Christ and fulfilling his command, you're just going through the motion for yourself. But this symbolizes Isaiah's word that he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes we are healed. But when we come I want you to forget about you. This is all about Christ. And what he has done for each one of us. We drink of this cup and eat of this bread because we are worthy to come to Christ. We are worthy to be forgiven for what we lack. There's no lack in God. I'm going to ask Elder Sherman if he will pray and ask God to consecrate our sacrament. Transform him, Lord. As we hold him on that cross, spiritual bread. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and ask that you will bless this sacrament of the Jews of Rome. That represents the shedding blood. The blood that still has power. The blood that wipes away every deceit. The blood that breaks every chain. Hallelujah. Amen. Elder, would you pass me one of the sacraments? The word of the Lord says, I have received of the Lord that which also I offer unto you. Deacons, would you all come stand at this altar? Just, you can stand with them. You can stay. Missionaries don't leave. Jesus says, I have one desire. Let's not miss the meaning of these scriptures. This was spoken almost 2,000 years ago to his little 12 bands of followers. And even one of them had a demonic spirit in him. 
But he spoke to them and says, I have one desire. That is to sup with you. And we can take that down through the ages. He still has a desire to sup, to dine, to commune with us. And he spoke in the future, but he spoke in the present. He said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Before it ever was broken, he said, it's done for you. It's done for me. This bread symbolizes my broken body. Take ye, eat all of it. In other words, I want all of my disciples to ingest me. The bread gives us strength. When we come to this table, we'll come and say, Lord, I am still your disciple. And after they had supped, after they had eaten the bread for the nourishment of their flesh, he said, take this cup, which is my blood that is shed for you. Drink ye all of it. This is my spirit. I want it to circulate through your spiritual veins just as your blood circulates through your physical body and it keeps you alive. Drink ye all of it. Come and dine, the master's calling. I know it was the blood. I asked the sanctuary servants if they would direct you to the altar. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, you died. Please take it back to your seat and we will all commune together. The blood for me. I know it was. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, one day when I was lost, you died upon the cross. And I, I know it for me. Oh, he's coming back again. He's coming back again. He's coming back again for me. Lord, one day when I was lost, you died upon the cross. And I know it was his blood for me. 